In summary then, normalization of serum testosterone for six months resulted in no change in prostatic levels of androgens, histology, biomarkers, gene expression, or cancer frequency or severity. We conclude that the prostate risks from testosterone replacement therapy of six months duration may not be as great as once feared. However, caution here, these data do not assure prostate safety for populations of older men harboring highly prevalent subclinical disease. We know that if you do uh, thorough studies of the prostate glands of aging men, microscopic foci of cancer are present in many of them that do not seem to be clinically significant. This doesn't guarantee that some effect won't be uh, seen when uh, entire populations of men are studied for safety, but this would require a much bigger, much longer study in the individual patient, especially with a negative biopsy at baseline, the risk appears to be quite small. A degree of prostate safety for men undergoing testosterone replacement therapy is established. Hopefully this finding won't lead to abusive widespread application of this finding. From a laboratory standpoint, again, the fallibility of the PSA test for prostate cancer is shown. Um, this supports a, an emerging body of thought to show that PSA levels are not great markers for prostate cancer, best we've got at the moment, but they are fallible because of the men in this uh, study who were found to have cancer on biopsy, only one had a PSA level greater than four, which is the usual, usual trigger point for prostate biopsy. With regard to the basic physiology of the prostate gland, it's interesting that the tissue levels within the prostate of the male hormones don't change despite a wide range of circulating levels in the serum, in the bath surrounding uh, the prostate, bathing the prostate. There seems to be a buffering mechanism in effect, protecting the gland uh, from a very wide range of circulating hormones. Now, how this buffering mechanism is established and how it breaks down uh, in extremes, such as uh, in castration or in supranormal dosages of testosterone, that information is not, uh, is not yet available. I want to conclude by acknowledging the great contributions to this project from these fine medical scientists. Uh, and finally, thanks uh, very much once again to Dr. DeAngelis and uh, Dr. Fontenot-Rose and their fine staff at JAMA who helped make this article coherent. Thank you. <laughs>